YouTube had decided to ban Alex Jones's YouTube channel off of their website. Now, this was something that was very significant because of the sheer size and the popularity of that channel. Now, the Alex Jones channel, I mean, just think about it, had over 2 million subscribers, thousands of videos, possibly even over 10,000 videos. I'm going to, uh, I think so. But they decided to actually take his channel down, which is a really, really striking move. Now, I've already talked about the takedown of the uh, Alex Jones YouTube channel, but I want to, I do want to go a little bit in depth and sort of talk about it because I'm, uh, you know, I'm sort of, I don't know, there's a little bit of both sides here, but, you know, <laughs> you YouTube took him down after Spotify had first removed some of his podcasts, so then Spotify takes him off, and then somewhat in unison, you know, within like 12 hours or some shit like that, Apple took him down, and YouTube took him down. YouTube taking him down is extremely insane, because... A channel with 2 million subscribers really is no joke. And that's a really extremely, extremely, extremely large channel. And I'm going to assume that the bulk of his income would come from YouTube. Although, I'm not 100% sure about that. But, if it's not YouTube, maybe it's, I don't know, some advertising that he has with his website. Or uh, maybe the, you know, the fame super vitality those pills i don't know those the supplements those might be the other one i'm not sure but i'm going to assume that that would be even if it's not the bulk right let's say it's like 40 percent or 30 percent that's still a big chunk of money to be lost but of course they're you know these companies have their terms of service and you know they purposely go out of their way to make these terms of service extremely extremely vague so that they can sort of just do these gymnastics to be able to, you know, just whenever they want, just ban someone. That's essentially what they do with their terms of service. And it is something that's kind of, you know, kind of worrisome. Now, the type of stuff that Alex Jones has done, and we know that there's currently a lawsuit that's going on. I believe it's two parents of the victims of the Sandy Hook mass shooting have sued Alex Jones uh, for defamation uh, because they talk about how they constantly are getting harassed and it, it's a never ceasing harassment essentially a never ending harassment uh, from his fans um, because they're essentially you know saying that oh you know you guys are liars you guys are fakes you guys are frauds you guys are this didn't really happen you're faking this you're <laughs> you guys are fakers and <clears throat> just thinking about that is probably one of the most disgusting things ever. One of the most disgusting things you could possibly do. Because you're talking about the parents of these victims of a school shooting. Which is one of the, you know, when you talk about these sort of atrocities. I mean, ki the killing of school children is probably one of the worst possible tragedies that could occur. And so for that to occur, it's a pretty shitty thing. And, you know... Obviously, there are only really a few exceptions to the principle and the First Amendment, but the principle of free speech, you know, things like libel, slander, defamation, direct threats of violence, and incitement of violence. Now, despite these lines being drawn, of course, it becomes difficult to determine what, you know, actually goes into these lines, you know, what qualifies for these lines. And so... What you're talking about is certain things could be debated as whether or not they're direct threats. I, I've i seen a clip of him saying that he would beat Adam Schiff's ass. So I'm going to take that as direct threat of violence. Now, the thing that makes me extremely worrisome is the, the fact that aside from Twitter, Twitter decided not to ban Alex Jones from their, from their platform. But aside from Twitter, I mean, again, the other, all the other places decided to, all these other tech giants decided to just take him out within like 12 hours. There's no way that you're telling me that they didn't do that as a chain reaction or of some sort of like, you know, lead and we're going to go into. So there had to be something going on there because there's no way possible that there could have been this sort of a, you know, chain to occur 
there would be there's just, it's just impossible it's to make sense right it's it's just not there's no way that something like that can naturally happen without some sort of either communication or lead or whatever i think that that is extremely dangerous i think that's very very dangerous that the idea of somebody just essentially being banned off of the internet is essentially what that is because okay Spotify takes you down, YouTube takes you down, Apple takes you down, Twitter's on the verge of taking you down. I mean, that's a really scary precedent to set. Now, the other thing also is that the taking down of a political YouTube channel is another thing too, because it's much more foreseeable that YouTube can take down or will take down any other political YouTube channel now than it was before. That's not debatable. You know, it's much more... Uh, foreseeable it is much more you know something that could possibly happen or at least could be fathomable that another political YouTube channel gets taken down and I mean for all we know the direction that YouTube is going in I mean worst case scenario doomsday scenario they take down all the political channels that would be really fucking horrible but I mean it, it ends up unfortunately being a possibility they could what they could do is they could just take down every YouTube channel every political YouTube channel except for you know, the mainstream outlets, which I think is a very, very, very scary possibility and a very scary, um, you know, just thing that could happen. So that that those are sort of the two sides of it. And I'm I'm a little bit torn here. But here's something interesting. So, of course, this has to do with the banning of Alex Jones off of YouTube and everywhere else except for Twitter. Now, Paul Joseph Watson is part of InfoWars. If you recall, I actually did a video about this, but... During the, when the Las Vegas mass shooting happened, in which I think it was over like 400 people were killed, which is an insane amount of people to die from a, from a shooting. It's a huge amount. But what you're talking about is there were, uh, there was this video where Alex Jones claimed that it was some, you know, crazy leftist when that was complete, completely false and there was no actual motive, no actual motive found. And Paul Joseph Watson sort of sat there and acted like, you know, like, oh, man, like he was sort of he was not agreeing with Alex Jones, um, but really clearly looks somewhat uncomfortable <laughs> because he's just he's on this show where there's, you know, this crazy conspiracy nonsense being spewed. Now, Oliver Darcy, I guess, is some dude at CNN, so no one really cares about him, but Here's a tweet that Paul Joseph Watson sent out. He said, my personal message to CNN's Oliver Darcy, who is leading the crusade on behalf of CNN to have all offensive speech banned. He sent this message to him. He said, congratulations on creating the precedent that anyone who offends anyone must be banned from having a platform, Oliver. Very conservative of you, stunning and brave. And here's what's really crazy. He essentially took a swipe at his boss. He said... And yes, Alex's silly conspiracy rants are often incendiary. But who is attacking innocent people on the streets, Oliver? Who's trying to massacre congressmen? People you're not siding with try by trying to ban anyone who holds them to account. Wow. I did not expect him to say that. And as of right now, he has not deleted this tweet. So that's something that I find interesting. I don't know if he's going to go back and delete it eventually. I'm not too sure. But... I mean, he, he literally said that Alex's conspiracy rants are silly and often incendiary. And I didn't expect him to say that. <laughs> I didn't expect him to actually outright say that about his boss. But, I mean, if you, if again, like I said earlier, if you have seen the video clip that I'm talking about, it's very clear that Paul Joseph Watson did not really look comfortable in the way that he was speaking to Alex Jones and just you know, sort of looked, it looked on as, you know, this kind of, uh, you know, like, what the fuck are you talking about? And like, shit, this is making me look bad. Because, of course, the list of crazy Alex Jones conspiracy theories are, I mean, it's endless. The worst of them, of course, is that Sandy, the Sandy Hook massacre was something that was, you know, manufactured and it was fake, uh, that was used by Barack Obama to get, uh, to get gun control, which is, a really disgusting conspiracy theory to say the least but he's obviously got a shit ton of other ones he's got you know i don't know if he's trying to talk i don't know if he's calling you know the sandy hook massacre conspiracy 
sort of silly if so i mean that's really unacceptable and i think it's really disgusting and a shitty thing to do i don't know how else to put that now there of course are the they're turning the frogs gay conspiracy theory which is a whole another you know more of a shenanigan type thing maybe he's talking about that i don't know but you know let me know your thoughts on this down below it's something that is just kind of odd